Imagine a world where plastics solve problems rather than create them. They're made out of garbage, they're compostable, they're endlessly recyclable. Scientists and entrepreneurs are in a race to solve humanity's addiction to petroleum-based polymers that are clogging landfills and the ocean. And investors are taking note. More than $30 trillion are currently held in sustainable investments. So whoever gets there first could be solving one of humanity's biggest issues. There's a startup that claims it can turn all kinds of trash into treasure in the form of these plastic-like pellets. Everything from food stuff, like chicken bones, banana peel, leftover, salad, your soup, the mixed plastic, the cargo, and the paper. UBQ Materials has raised $30 million from private investors to do just that. Humans create at least 3.5 million tons of solid waste each day. That's roughly the weight of 1.5 million cars. At this dump south of Jerusalem, UBQ sorts and dries the garbage, shreds it, and then grinds it into this confetti-like material. That gets melted into a spaghetti and then chopped into pellets. UBQ sends those off to conventional plastic manufacturers who can mix them with regular plastic pellets. It sounds like magic, it looks like magic, but it's actually quite sophisticated technology. UBQ doesn't allow filming behind the doors where the patented magic happens. We asked the company's CEO if he would ever share his secret with the world. Do you ask Coca-Cola if they will release the formula so everybody can drink Coca-Cola? I mean, why do you protect your technology? Why do pat um, patents exist? Like, you know, like, uh, yeah. because, you, because you're a business and if you want to create a business out of what you're doing, you need to protect your, your know-how. It's not unusual for patented technology to be kept secret, but this venture isn't without skeptics. Dwayne Pretty, CEO of the Plastic Expert Group, called UBQ's claims too good to be true, likening it to alchemy in a 2018 Associated Press article. When reached by phone in late 2019, a spokesperson said Pretty had been instructed not to speak with Business Insider. But another spokesperson told us he remained skeptical. UBQ has won over other prominent scientists, though, including Oded Shosya, a Hebrew University biochemist who serves on the board. So I was skeptical, but uh, after a thorough uh, studying and experiments that uh, conducted by a former student of mine that uh, actually joined the company at a certain point of time, we realized that indeed uh, uh, there is something unique and novel in this technology. UBQ hopes these recycling bins, presented with much fanfare last summer in Virginia, are just a first step into the U.S. market. We hope that this is going to be a ubiquitous solution to the very, very difficult problem of waste management in the world. I'm super excited that they've kind of picked Virginia to start their process and start talking and bringing their, their technology and innovation here. From 2016 to 2018, sustainable, responsible, and impact investing grew by more than 38%. And the appetite seems to be growing. I think we're seeing rising regulatory pressures globally on bans around plastics and single-use plastics. But I also think we're continuing to see those social pressures. Uh, you're seeing more and more of it on social media. It's really opened up this issue to the masses. An investment director at Schroeder's, which manages hundreds of billions of dollars in accounts all over the world, Hughes helps her clients choose sustainable initiatives to invest in. I think part of your investment due diligence is always to see that evidence physically. And it's also making sure that, yes, looking at their supply chain, talking to all their suppliers. In addition to investing in this space, companies are also feeling the pressure to use plastic alternatives in their packaging. These pellets being pushed through an extruder are made of a polyester material that's made from corn, but mainly petroleum based. But they're compostable. When I came on uh, about six years ago uh, to now, we've more than quadrupled in size. EcoSafe is a Vancouver-based company that is one of the manufacturers of compostable film products intended to replace conventional plastics. It's a lot harder to make a bag that's going to get you the same performance characteristics of regular plastic, but is also going to perform at the compost and break down properly and not contaminate soil and not contaminate that process. Even though the market is growing, there are still some major challenges. 
it all comes back to the product's end of life. For a compostable cup to break down quickly, it needs moisture levels and temperatures to be just right, as they are in a composting facility. Everything is biodegradable. I mean, we're biodegradable, a cup is biodegradable, I mean, radioactive waste is biodegradable. It just takes 5,000 years to biodegrade. Frank Franciosi at the U.S. Composting Council explains how the market has gone mainstream over the last decade. You're seeing more and more stockholders uh, going to companies and say, you need to be green, you need to be more sustainable, and they're looking at it, at their production processes. Instead of cradle to grave, they're looking to develop products that are cradle to cradle, that are part of the circular economy. In some ways, compostable plastics face many of the same challenges as conventional recyclable plastics, a whole lot of responsibility for the end consumer. Many of the plastics we toss into the recycling bin, like straws and shopping bags, are not recyclable at all. Others never get a second life because the chemicals added to make them useful, like fillers or solvents, make them impossible to recycle. The most recyclable plastic, polyethylene terephthalate, usually doesn't get properly sorted. And even the 25% of it that does only goes through the process once or twice before ending up in incinerators, landfills, or in the ocean. The ultimate goal then would be material that can be recycled over and over and over again. Berkeley scientists stumbled upon what they say is a formula for endlessly recyclable plastics. In chemistry labs, you wash your glassware with acid washes or base washes. And what we noticed when we cleaned up glassware contaminated with PDK resins is that an acid bath would actually transform the polymer back into its original monomer. And this was very unexpected to us. In May 2019, they announced a new family of mainly petroleum-based polymers that can be broken down into molecular parts and then reassembled into different shapes, textures, and colors again and again and again without any loss of performance or quality. They call it PDK. The next challenge is to commercialize it and make it scalable. PDKs are one-third plant-based, but they're hoping to get to 95%. They plan to develop PDK plastics with a wide range of uses for things like textiles, 3D printing, and foams. If PDKs were to systematically replace everyday plastics, that would mean when you place a plastic cup in the recycling bin, it would be much more likely to have a new life, but you would still have to take that extra step to recycle. Meanwhile, every day, nearly one million plastic beverage bottles are sold each minute around the world. Scientists estimate that right now, there are at least 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic debris weighing 270,000 tons floating in the oceans. By 2050, there will be so much plastic, it will outweigh the fish. And for now, the race to find the perfect plastic continues.